We are recording. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is 5.37 p.m. Thank you all for coming. Um, the agenda looks a little bit different, uh, as some of you have already noted, than previous agendas. Uh, we have some guests who are joining us tonight who may be interested in joining MAC, which is very exciting. So we'll start with doing introductions. So if everyone I'll call on you could go around and say your name and you know your title or role in your capacity in Mac, that would be great. And then I'll move to our potential new members to introduce themselves and why they're interested in joining Mac. So I will start, I'm Jocelyn Santiago. I am currently the acting chair and I am the early childhood services coordinator for the town of Mansfield. Then I'll pass it along to Lisa. Hi everybody, Lisa Don. I'm the director at Community Children's Center here in Stores. Stores Mansfield. <laughs> and Kathleen? Hi, Kathleen Kreider, Access Community Action Agency. Thank you. Emily? Hi, I'm Emily Webson. I am one of the youth services librarians at the Mansfield Public Library. And Katie? Katie Bell, she, her, hers, and I am the Youth Services Supervisor for the Town of Mansfield. Great. So uh, we have other members who unfortunately are not here tonight, um, but other members of our group are other directors that received the School Readiness Grant. Um, we have our superintendent's appointee, and then we have some other um, parents that also join uh, the council. So now we'll move on to potential new members. We'll start off with Ashley. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm Ashley Rhodes. I live in Mansfield, and I'm just very interested to know what this is all about. Thank you. And then, Deanna, are you also here as a potential new member? Uh, hi. I'm just, just like here to like listen and like learn. Just, just um, I'm like a journalism student, like at the university. University of Connecticut and my professor wanted me to just look around just the community the oh my camera is not on just That's look okay. around and just um just like write a story based on like an event happening in Mansfield so I, I kind of just picked that so it's just like learning from you guys and everything so Great. thank you welcome um, Mac's primary role is to serve as the School Readiness Council, so we manage the School Readiness Grant. Um, the grant provides tuition, um, subsidies for families. Uh, it's based on income and also family size, um, but it's a really great program that we have 32 slots for here in Mansfield, so we're able to get families on our wait list and also move them off and get them some support to high quality early care. So that's our main um, goal here is really managing that and just checking in with each other. It's also a great collaborative team where we can share out things that we're working on in the community or things that we are looking for support for. Any issues that we may identify that we can help with in the past, Mac has done some work with the playground project. So kind of looking for forward what we can accomplish in the coming years and what our focus wants to be. So thank you for joining us and for your interest. Um, I did not receive any public comment. Just check no one is here to make a public comment. All right, thank you. We'll have to hold off on the approval of our December minutes for our next meeting when we do have a quorum. So we'll move right along um, to school readiness council items and member reports. So. Uh, our school readiness liaison meeting with the whole state and Commissioner Beth Bai um, has been rescheduled a few times just with uh, scheduling conflicts with Commissioner Bai. So there's not a lot of updates I have currently for you. We're meeting next week, so I uh, presume by the next meeting I'll have much more to share out. Um, but as of right now, UConn Child Labs, we have filled their open slot, uh, so they are completely full now. And then some news for the grant, which is very exciting, is it's looking like it will be another continuation year. That's um, the angle they're kind of leaning towards for right now. So nothing is official yet, um, but we will be receiving um, the workbooks for the grant. They said in early April, so we can expect those soon. It's a very quick turnaround of submission by May. So I think that's why they're going in the direction of a continuation year again. So easy peasy for us and we'll get that going as soon as i have that information you will all know and we'll get that out 
Uh, the other update is two of our centers have applied for the ARPA Facilities Improvement Grant. Um, one center has done what they need to do, and that has been submitted to the state um, for reimbursement. So we're just waiting for that now. Thank you, Jocelyn. You're welcome. <laughs> and just, uh, Jocelyn, all centers yeah. were aware of the opportunity for that, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, the amounts really played a role here if it was worth it to go for an improvement with the amount that they were given. So yes, the ones that were offered it had the opportunity to pursue that or just say not right now. Gotcha. Uh, moving into our Mansfield Advocates for Children recruitment update. Um, I've been working really hard to get communications out on our social medias to reach some uh, people out there in the community who may be interested. Uh, one that we are looking to identify is the OEC would like us to have a local business owner um, on the council, just for all those different perspectives. So uh, Katie and I have been working to kind of identify some Mansfield businesses that may be interested. So I will be reaching out to them in the coming weeks. And um, the Yukon School of Education, a professor had recently reached out to me. She is teaching a power, privilege, and public education course. And the course is centered around the students creating a video advocacy project. And they are interested in making one about Mac, which is exciting. So I think this would be a great opportunity for us to create a video to tell the community what we're doing and that it's more than just school readiness and even highlighting what is school readiness for those who might not already be connected to early childhood centers or the public schools and they might not be aware of that um, and they are looking for some interviews with some of our members so if anyone is really excited about being interviewed and recorded for this video we can connect and talk about that um, I'm meeting with the students next week who will be taking on Mac specifically, uh, just to kind of discuss what my goals are um, for this video advocacy project. I think the main focus for me is just sharing out who we are and what we do and also highlighting the open positions that we do have because we are still actively recruiting for a chair, um, a local business um, owner. And among a, a few other uh, roles that they are looking for, we we are working right now to fill some of our parent roles and nurse consultant roles, but it's an ongoing process. And as term limits come to an end, people may choose they don't want to serve anymore. And it would be nice to have that video as a tool to use in our recruitment strategies. Can you guys tell me, is the Mansfield Academy of Dance still in operation? Yes. Yeah. Is that a potential business owner recruit? We have identified them as someone on our list. So I think right now we had thinking about kind of the different youth serving, particularly the early childhood serving um, businesses. I think we had identified Mansfield Academy of Dance, um, Miss Kelly's Dance Studio as well, um, Bellari's and the um, Frogbridge gymnastics, gymnastics over in the East Brook. And those were the ones that we could mainly think of that are Mansfield based and would have that face-to-face -face interaction with the, the youngest population of kiddos. So kind of looking at um, who might be the best fit and interested and have the time to, to put into the work that Mac is doing. Yeah, so if any anything pops into your head or ideas or connections that you might have personally that you may feel is a good fit for this, please feel free to send those my way um, and we'll explore those options. Kelly Zimmerman, am I getting that name right? Yes. So, right, Lisa, didn't she, wasn't she on Mac a million years ago? Yeah. On yeah. Mac as a Board of Ed appointee um, and then had stepped down from that position. Um, no, wait, she was on Mac as a parent and then got added to the Board of Ed and then stepped down from being a parent because she was taking on Board of Ed responsibilities and it was, um, she needed to take something off her plate to add oh. to. Thank you. Yeah, I just remember Kelly Zimmerman, Miss Kelly. I just remember Miss Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, so. What was the name of that course again that the students are going to come from? Power, Privilege, and Public Education. Thank you. That's a great title for a class. I sure hope it's as good as it sounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. Um, 
and you know i'll get to see the edits as they're making along the way and the progress and checking in to make sure it's still in line with what we want the video to be and they they don't post it anywhere um after the video is done without our permission there's lots of consent forms that they'll need to get from us and those who are interested in partaking in an interview about uh what Mac is all about. Um, there will be consent forms for that too. So the professor really has all her stuff in order and is really excited about this. She did remind me that these are students and it is their first time doing a video type of project. So to uh, have that lens when we are receiving the video, which I'm sure they're going to do great work anyways. Um, any support is really great and it's great to be connected to our neighbors over there at UConn. So we're really excited about that. Just thought about the adventure park. Yes, they are on there too. They're on my list. <laughs> we we were guessing that the trickier thing with the adventure park is because they are a seasonal business. They yeah. might not be able to support the work of Mac throughout the year, especially since um, we don't tend to meet in the summer. Right. We we were like doing a lot of googling to find we were. <laughs> businesses in Mansfield. There's a lot of good food in Mansfield, but a lot of good <laughs> food. We, wanted, we wanted to look at what what is engaging face to face with the youth rather than necessarily who might be serving the youth chicken nuggets yeah we're like farmer's cow they've got a great kids menu they do <laughs> yes yeah, so, so. We're also brainstorming at lunchtime and we were just really hungry <laughs> <laughs> business owner it's not like you couldn't get a representative from the puppet museum for example like, that's not really a business owner right right yeah okay yeah right so <laughs> we're we're doing what we can um with the options that we have and we will explore those and see who's interested and, and work to fill those roles so more to come on that um well so i wanted to discuss ideas for spending quality enhancement funds um but i could just gauge lisa and emily what you're thinking of if you have any ideas of things that you'd like to spend things on this year any supplies that you're really wishing for lisa i know we touched base today about some first aid and cpr and health types of trainings, um, those will still be covered. And for clarification, Anything? this is for the next fiscal year grant, correct? Like we already have the approved enhancement spending for the 23-24. Yes, right. yeah, it'll be the same amount for the next fiscal year grant. We haven't spent anything so far um, for QE this year, this fiscal year. So I... You know, we're, we're winding towards springtime where they're, they're going to say, why do we have all this money still? What are we doing with it? So I'd love to kind of just get some ideas from you of what might be helpful for your center, what you're kind of planning, um, if anything is in the works that you're hoping to use some of this money for. So just to be clear, it's we're not talking about next year. We're talking about now. Talking about now. Yeah. What, <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing to spend this money before? the end of April, hopefully. <laughs> so can I go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I sent you an invoice today, Jocelyn, for um, the replacement cots that we needed to buy. We had had uh, cots at CCC for 50 years that we loved so much that were fold out army cots. Uh, with canvas slings and we liked them because they could rock a little and they had that sling aspect so they held the kids a little and um, we sent them home with a family we'd been nursing them along mm, quite a bit and then we sent them home with a family that had some repair skills and said here see what you can do with these and he brought them back and said I'm not fixing these you you need to replace these so <laughs> So we did replace them to the um, tune of $1,000. So I um, I did submit that invoice to you today and that would be something that would be really helpful to uh, get covered with the quality and enhancement money. Great. I'll also just put a plug in um, and you can all just nod politely um, for training staff training in our tick initiative at access if that still resonates if people remember that conversation um that could be another i mean it exists this year it, exi it exists next year uh, but it exists great emily any any hopes and dreams for the library 
Yeah, so we have been working hard at the library to rearrange things a little, update things. Um, and I am hoping, as mentioned previously, to expand our play area and kind of get some more, like some solid imaginative play things going on. And um, we're trying to make some space for that to become a possibility. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the library and not too much room to move stuff around. But so we've been working on that. So I, I don't have anything in mind exactly, but that is what I would be thinking about. And I can certainly um, before the next meeting or yeah, even sooner than that, um, have some certain items or things like that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Just, Thank and you. as things come to mind, feel free to just email them to me. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll be in touch about that. Thank you, Justin. And I know last year, Emily, um, you and Rachel were hoping for a parachute for the library. Did you end up getting one or are you still wanting? We did not get one, um, but we definitely could get one. Yeah, I do think that would be pretty you fun. Must, yeah. You must have a parachute. <laughs> we can get a parachute. <laughs> Put it on the list. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. You know you can buy one without even being a PE teacher. You could just go on Amazon. <laughs> you could be a regular person to buy a parachute. I have done <laughs> <laughs> And we I did have a program, a, we, but I did it and they didn't ask me if I was a gym teacher. So <laughs> we had a performer this past summer that used one and it was really fun. So it would be very fun to get one. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll work towards doing that. Um, and I'll gauge what the other directors, um, are looking forward towards that too. So I'll, I'll probably include it in our next meeting too, just if anything new has popped up or any finalized ideas or if the other directors have other thoughts too on how they might want to spend that. Um, so I did have plan a mutually agreeable time for a pre-literacy training. Uh, this would be for our center directors. So Lisa. <laughs> I know, right? We've, um, we've, I think we've shot you a couple of um, ideas, right? And Aaron did too. Yes. So yeah. our presenter that we had in our December meeting, Nicole Gallagher, who is offering this training, um, has proposed a Friday. Um, but the Friday, some centers are open, some centers are not open for the day, and it's during a hard time of day. It's from 1.30 to 3 was the proposed time. So for a lot of the centers, that's prime rest and nap time, and staff needs to be in the classroom for that to supervise the children. So I did let um, Nicole know that for our centers to get the most out of the participation and the most employees involved, uh, the evening would probably work best for us. So. Mm -hmm. um, I'll touch base with the other directors too and see, and hopefully by next meeting we can land on a specific date that we could counter propose to Nicole. Thank you. You're welcome. And then last thing is moving into member reports. So this is a new section um, where I would just love to hear any of the amazing work that you all are doing. Um, since Mac is a collaborative council, it's great for us to know uh, what accomplishments we're all doing and what things that we're working on, events that you want to plug, issues that you're facing, your time to share, anything that you feel is relevant. So I will start with Emily from the library. Please go ahead and give us your update. All right. So yeah, as I said, we have been working on moving things around, giving some things more space and, and trying to open things up a little bit in the children's area. Um, so the graphic novels now have a lot of new space. So it's a major exciting thing now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're just looking forward to the spring. We have some programs planned for this little February mini vacation. Um, we're having the Denison Pequot Seapost Nature Center come with an animal program on the Friday and then just like a wonder workshop play and STEM craft activity session on the Tuesday. Um, so we can definitely pass that info along to all the centers and everybody. Um, and then, yeah, we're already getting planning for April vacation and summer, which will be here really quickly. And we want to fill it up with as much fun activities on varieties of times and days of the week as we can. So yeah, I'm excited to be back at it. And um, oh, I was just thinking if it 
is all right with everybody, I'd love to invite Devin Andrews, the new library director, to come to meet everybody in one of these meetings. Um, she used to be a children's librarian and um, came from Charleston, South Carolina. So um, she she's very friendly and would love to, I think, learn more about this meeting and 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 get to know you all. So if that sounds good, I'll go ahead with that and we can see when we can fit her in. Yeah. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's basically it. Great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so then I would move into director reports from my <laughs> early childhood center director. Oh, Katie, I see a hand. I, I can do, I can do a sector report because I'm not a director yeah. report. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so updates from youth services world and human services world. Um, if folks on our call haven't already heard, um, our human services director, Allison Maynard, um, is ending with us next week. She is um, heading back to her hometown of Summers to do school social work there with that district. Um, so the town of Mansfield has, as of yesterday, officially posted that opening on the website um, mm -hmm. for the new human services director. We are going to receive some directoral coverage in the meantime um, from Leslie McDonough, the, the former um, recently retired library department head. Um, so she is coming back to help us from that administrative standpoint of, of coverage for our department while they do that recruitment for Allison's position. Um, so if anybody knows any LMSW um, individuals who would be interested in serving as a department head, um, they did get rid of the previous um, expectation that it needed to be an LCSW. Um, so there is a, a different licensure um, openness that they have in this time around in the recruitment. Um, so we're hoping to find someone who can come in and, and take on our team um, and take us to the great places that we all want to go. Um, and speaking of great places that we have gone, uh, myself and Marin Jelly Diaz, who's our newest youth services social worker to the team, um, we got to go down to DC last week to the CADCA conference, which they, they they used to make it stand for things, but they are just, they stopped making it stand for things, but it's uh, prevention work. So um, some of the really great resources that um, we learned about there, we're happy to bring back to the community. And one of the ones that I wanted to share here tonight, um, because it does a really great range of support for parents, is called operationparent.org. Um, I actually just posted today on the Youth Services Facebook page, a webinar actually two webinars that they have coming up and they really run the gamut from, um, you know, early to middle high school, um, youth parenting tips and skills. So whether it's talking to your kids about substance use or, you know, positive parenting techniques of, you know, making sure your kid is going to bed on time. Um, they've got those webinars. They're free to watch and they have them, um, really readily accessible. Um, I know the Mansfield public school district has their contract with, um, peace at home parenting as well. So, um, this kind of, is able to catch anybody who is maybe not being served by the um, service uh, to be, and they even just have them up on YouTube. Um, we're working on checking out some of their parent handbooks. I have the one at my desk um, for the youngest parents. It's like that elementary school age. So I'm going to be flipping through that um, in the coming days to see if it's a resource that we want to order to make more accessible and more available to the community through the centers, through the schools, through the library, um, because we do have funding in our positive youth development pot for that. Um, and then there's, they are sending me the one for the older kiddos, the middle and high school age, because they ran out of those at the conference because they were so good. Um, so we're excited to be <laughs> adding those things and kind of exploring the other stuff that we learned um, down at the CADCA conference. Thank you. I'll put a link to that in the chat. Lisa, do you have anything you would like to share? Sure. Um, so we were one of the lucky centers that received the, the ARPA grant that Jocelyn was referencing earlier. And we got to um, realize a project that we had been trying to do for a long time. We had old, worn out, half not working fluorescent lighting throughout our whole building. And so we wrote a good narrative and it got accepted. And we replaced all of our lighting with these sleek, cool, um, well, warmer blue light um, LED uh, light fixtures. And so, so much appreciation that that paid for about a little more than half of what the project cost. And so we have a couple of other grant requests out um, 
to cover the rest of it or to be reimbursed for the rest of it. So that is awesome. Thank you very much. And then um, as, as we look around for trainings that we need to um, do to stay compliant with school readiness, um, because we're in nature preschool, we gravitate first towards what are the um, what are the nature preschool kind of trainings that are gonna fill the bill. So uh, we belong to this group called the Natural Start Alliance, and um, they have so many awesome webinars. And so I've been uh, previewing a lot of them and sending them along to our our um, staff. And one that was particularly lovely for me was um, establishing a, let's see, what can I, I have to remember it. <laughs> a sense of, a sense of place, establishing a sense of place through mapping. So I am married to a land surveyor, so mapping is, I'm all about the mapping, but, um, but more to the point was this sense of place and this way to really walk with the kids to these areas and and um, having strategies for allowing them to sink in and then to do some representation uh, beyond that and then share it around with their friends. Uh, so it has that literacy aspect where you would take dictation from a kid and then read it at a group time or read it in a small group and then just revisit the same place and see well, what do I see today? Or do you see what I saw? Or what do you see? And, you know, all this kind of sharing going on. So that has been kind of a cool focus that we've had for the last several weeks. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Kathleen, I know you plugged your trauma-informed care for access. Do you have anything uh, else you'd like to share? Yeah, that's just in the context of quality enhancement dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> training for for centers, um, that's all, you know, the business of access is so much about basic needs, right? So it's the legislative session. So the way that that looks for us at some level is a lot of advocacy work right now in terms of money into our LIHEAP, the Connecticut Energy Assistance Program. We're also spending a lot of time uh, talking about the issue of homelessness, sheltering, diversion, navigation, street level outreach, um, looking at increased dollars through DEMAS through, for mental health support. Um, so uh, I think that that is the stuff that's most relevant to this group, yeah. Advocacy, advocacy, and more advocacy. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We love advocacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? All right. Um, so for upcoming agenda items, I'd like to discuss any future guests we'd like to um, potentially bring to Mac that may be worthy for you. Anyone that may be able to offer a really cool training or just someone who's an expert in an area that we might want to learn more about. So something that we might want to look at at the next meeting. And then also, I'm really excited to announce some really cool early childhood community offerings that we have in the works over here at Mansfield Youth Services. Um, so we're not quite ready to announce them yet, but by next meeting, you should all know and would love your support with rolling those out. So I look forward to that. You can give some help. Um, well, so my play group in the fall that I ran, we'll be picking that back up in the spring. Um, I, I think I've talked to some directors already with the idea that I may start some early childhood nature walks in the summertime so that's official that will be happening very excited for that I'm a very passionate uh, nature girl so <laughs> I would love to bring that into the community and, and teach our littles about cool fungi in the woods um, <laughs> and the other thing that I'm working on um, we actually just got them in um, we don't have a official start date for it yet, but I have made playground passports for the town of Mansfield. So it mm. highlights all the playgrounds that we have in Mansfield. Each playground will have a question that um, you'll have to answer when you go to it. So you'll have to count how many slides are at a playground or different questions for each playground. They'll put those answers as they go around and 
put a stamp on each of their spots in their little passport, uh, and then they can submit it to me and for a chance to win a prize. So I think it'll be a cool way to get people outdoors, uh, looking to launch that for the springtime right up until the beginning of June. Um, so it'll be really cool. There's already um, some folks who are like, where's that playground? Like they've never heard of it before. So it, it'll be it'll be great to get people uh, to check out new areas and hopefully come together. So those are coming. Um, I'm hoping to provide some hard copies to the centers too for you to give to your families for like the passports. So you can just pass those out. Um, so yeah, we're really excited. More details to come in the next meetings. Um, I'll share the passport with you next time. Um, yeah, so we're really excited about that. Excited to expand our offerings to our littlest littles in the community. I don't know if it interests Mac at all, um, but one of the things that is now available, the United Way of Connecticut, the United Way of uh, Central and Northeastern Connecticut has released their ALICE report, A-L-I-C-E, Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed Report. So it is a uh, two-year look at the state's Alice population, asset limited, income constrained, employed population. Uh, it's interesting data. I don't know that it lands well for this group. Um, I'll throw it out there as an opportunity for uh, a guest speaker. I have the contact information of the people who would do that. There's also uh, an Alice report website, Jocelyn, that you could dive into beforehand uh, to see if it made any sense for this group. Um, you know, it lands heavily in my work day, but that doesn't mean it does in everybody else's. Okay. Yeah, I will definitely look at that. All right. Anything else before we adjourn? All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. <laughs> Do we need a second to adjourn? Anyone? Lisa, great. All right, everyone, thank you so much for coming tonight. I know it was a small crew, but great work as always. Uh, and I appreciate you all. And I will see you in March. Bye. Bye.